we're going. Thanks for listening to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Lock up your wives and daughters. It's time for Rish Outfield. How does one man get to be so funny? And Big Anklevich. The force is strong with this one. Boys and girls of every age. Would you like to see something strange? Welcome to the Dune Steve Audio Fiction Magazine. Episode 87. Mm. I am your insufferable host, Rish Outfield. And I am he who has to suffer it, Big Anklevich. Thank you for joining us. This is something of a... What's the opposite of special, sir? I don't know. The R word? <laughs> uh, mm, that's actually pretty funny, folks. This is not a special episode because of the story that we have for you today. But hey, it is Halloween and that makes everything special. Please just play along. Well, we've got a treat, not a trick for you today, folks. That's right. Our very own Rish Outfield has been hard at work scribbling away and has written a special episode for us today. Oh, wait, a, a, a non-special, a R-word episode Yes. for today. <laughs> No offense, ladies. Yeah, it's... I, and gentlemen. And I didn't say it, so that's okay, right? You can't say that letter. That's our letter. Oh, gosh. This story is called Sleepless Afternoon by Rish Outfield. About the author. Rish Outfield has been a Calvin Klein underwear model for the last 15 years. Don't hate me because I'm... Oh, oh, please continue. He... You might want to mention the Parsec nomination. You might want to mention my classic good looks. You might want to mention the fact that I remain young while those around me get older. He has several people that he has drained the life force from, and thus he is able to put together these wonderful stories for us, folks. It's all for you. It's all for you. And now... Sleepless Afternoon by Rish Outfield. Daddy, Daddy! Daddy, Daddy! Uh, what? Daddy, help! Okay, I'm coming. It's nearly three in the afternoon, son. What's all the racket about? What? What is it? There's an old English professor in my closet, Daddy. A what? He had a water bottle with a cross on it. Look, son. He's hiding, biting his time. Son, that's just crazy. There's nothing in your closet except for clothes, black widow spiders, and a severed head. He was there! Nonsense. You go back to sleep. Everything is going to be fine. Wait, wait! Bela, there's no such thing as English professors. Come on. It's not that. Then what is it? I can't go to sleep. And why not? The sun, it's hiding under my bed. It's waiting for me to fall asleep so it can jump out and get me. Where did you get that idea? Abigail, she said the sun waits just outside my crib during the day for someone to leave the gate unlatched. Son, Abigail Skelton is crazy. She believes in, in all sorts of things, like unicorns and grishnards and missionaries that go door to door. She says the first place it would go is under my bed so it can eat me. Look, that, that's just silly. The sun is too big to fit under your bed. It is? Yes, the sun is huge. It's bigger than the whole world. It is? But, but forget I said that. The sun is also very far away, too far to ever find you. Farther than Romania? Farther than Romania. Farther than Purgatory? Mm, maybe the same distance away as Purgatory. <sighs> okay. All right. I had this dream. You and me and Mommy and Auntie Gretchen ran into a Home Depot. And in the mirror department, I could see myself in all the mirrors. 
Well, well, that was just a dream. You're as undead as ever. But... Look, I'm going to get something to help you sleep. I'll be right back. I do believe in spooks. I do believe in spooks. Okay, okay. Here you go. Here you go. Sanguinties. Just like in the commercials. No negative. No negative, but, but oh, oh negative. negative. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ick. It's cold. Got it out of the fridge. It's better from the source. I know. Sorry. Son, I think I know what this is about. You do? I noticed the top refrigerator was unlocked. The adult refrigerator. Mm, really? Really. At first glance, everything was as it should be. But when I checked my decanter of 1982 B negative... What? Someone had drank some of it and replaced it with O positive. You thought I wouldn't notice? Vlad H. Tepish, son. You know these bottles are only for special occasions. Anniversaries, rebirths, the, 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 the slaying of old enemies, Stephanie Meyer sells her soul to the devil, that sort of thing. I'm sorry. Now listen, we have rules in this crypt for a reason. No aged blood, no feeding on hobos. I think you're supposed to call them the homeless now. No running with steaks, no watching the Fox Network, no Italian food or pizza delivery men, no cell phones. These rules are for your protection as well as that of our home. I know. I said I was sorry. So it's no wonder you're having daydreams. It's something you may have brought on yourself. So good light, son. One more thing. What is it? Yesterday I was playing at the mausoleum. The haunted mausoleum where the damned fear to walk? No, the one across from the boarded-up asylum. Ah. And Tammy Hellspawn was talking about this thing he saw on TV. He said there's a teenage girl in California who murders vampires for a living. Oh, Timmy Hellspawn. Your grandfather would be rolling in his grave to hear you talk like that. If he were still undead, that is. Well, is it true? Son, I think it's time we had a little talk. <sighs> Come on. Just a father-son thing. It won't hurt at all. That's what you said when my baby things were falling out. Be that as it may, there are certain things a growing undead boy needs to know about the world. And it's best I told you than you hear about it in the graveyard. A and certainly not from little antichrists like Timothy Hellspawn. He says he's not the antichrist. The, I knew his mother. Believe me, he's the antichrist. Anyway, don't listen to his stories. If there were a teenage girl who wanted to murder you, but you'd you just put her in your thrall, right? Right, but what if she was somehow immune to the stare? Those are just silly superstitions, son. From human entertainment. But what if... Son, in human movies, they think that if someone killed the head of our order, all of us vampires would die. <laughs> die? Or, get this, return to human form. <laughs> but that's absurd, Daddy. Not even a baby would believe that. Their whole culture is absurd. The only thing you have to fear from them is indigestion. You sure? Hey, how long have I been undead? A long time? A long time. Now I'm going to go back to the crypt. I've got two gallons of sorority co-ed I have to digest. But Daddy, I don't know if I can go back to sleep. Here, this ought to calm you down. Better? Better. All right. I'm going now. <sighs> okay. Good day. Sleep well, child. Dracula bless and keep you. Love you, Daddy. I love you too, son. Welcome back. Are, th are there still people listening? Oh, thank you for hanging around. 
That wasn't so bad, was it? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me amend that. That wasn't so long, was it? <laughs> and that's also what she said to you. Hmm. She said it was a good size. She was being nice. Uh, yeah, so there you have it. That's our, our, our story. Our first ever, finally we've hit it, the vampire story has seen our airwaves. Do we have airwaves? We don't actually go on the air. They've made it onto our MP3 waves. Okay. I don't think there's waves in that, but... We could save it as a wave file. Oh, there you go. In fact, I believe this was originally saved as a wave. Okay, never mind. I am, I'm truly sorry for uh, all my sins. I did say And I will on. endeavor heartily to... Move on. Yes. Do all those things. Hey, it, it was Halloween, and I wanted to give something back after draining, as you'd said, <laughs> so much life. For the children. Please give. Do you remember the origin of this particular story? Oh, the story goes way back. This was back when you still lived in L.A., if I remember right. And I think you were coming out to visit for Thanksgiving. And you had this idea that while you were here, oh, we could shoot a movie. Maybe we could go to the barn in your town and shoot something. Apparently, you just decided you'd brainstorm a few scripts and you wrote up like four. I four, think. yeah, four scripts. They were very short. They were like five or six lines, most of them. Just to give you an idea of what the story might be. Right. And you sent them out and said, here's this. And so we looked at them and I said, oh, yeah, that'd be interesting. And then you came out and I think we did get together for an evening, but we didn't make any movies. We didn't do anything. That we, we did our usual, oh, yeah, you know, that would be really cool to do that, but we're not going to do it kind of a thing. The story uh, of our entire friendship, I think. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, you went back on your merry way to uh, L.A. again. And, uh, yeah, years down the line, you thought, you know, that, that one thing, because I had mentioned the ones that I thought were fun, and this one was probably the top of the list. And, uh, yeah, you decided later on in another one of those uh, spates of... Spate a word? That is a word, right? You can't say that. That's our word. <laughs> and a... Sp is it spate or spat? Spat is a fight, right? A spate? Sure. Just dig yourself in deeper. Wow, listen to that. Okay. In a spate of excitement and creativity, I guess you decided, hey, we're going to make this movie again. And so you wrote up a much longer version of the script. And, of course, we never made the movie. But then we started up a podcast, and we had a forum for things like this. October rolled around, and you thought, now is the time. Like our Spirit of Christmas idea, which was also once a failed movie project, you decided to drop it. On the Dude Steve audio <laughs> fiction magazine Dump. as a special gift. Dump it. He shoots and wow, that one was an air ball. See, you have a son or you, you used to have a son. My condolences. And I just had always assumed that you would be the dad and your son would be the boy. And we'd sort of dress him up like Dracula and dress you up like Dracula and just shoot it in his bedroom. Uh -huh. There were many, many things wrong with that lofty plan. One of them was that, uh, yeah, there's just no way to muster up enough energy to actually film something. We tried one time. We tried one film in the time that we've been living near one another. I, I wouldn't – would you say that it was a total failure or just an utter failure? You know, I had it almost completely edited before the computer crashed earlier this year. Yes, but I, I believe we, we filmed it in 2006. Yeah, now it's totally gone. Oh, geez, it's gone completely? Well, I have the tape somewhere. I could completely start over. Wow, that sucks. Pitiful. There was not going to be any way. The thing that we shot all those years ago was so simple and so no budget. And it was just kids. Uh -huh. uh, we weren't even in it. And it just it, it didn't happen. Plus, your son doesn't act. I just thought, wow, shoot, we're, we're, in, we're never going to get this. And so I completely forgot about it until August or something of this year. And I thought about that, and I looked through all my files, and, and I didn't have it anymore. So it was one of those things that you're always talking about doing. I just rewrote it from memory uh, as best I could. And then you said, hey, I've, I've got that. You sent it to me. And they were totally different, except for the one line about the English professor in the closet. <laughs> they were different. But anyhow, I just this last weekend uh, had my niece over, and the two of us acted it out on my is there a word for the level of crappiness of my microphones? 
No, it still remains to be invented, this okay. word. Maybe we'll give away prizes to whoever comes up with a term <laughs> to describe the crappiness of my microphones. And we just recorded it, acted it out, and uh, I edited it together and then sent it to you to do sound effects, music, and uh, now we've got the finished product. Uh, so, so two things. First, I apologize about the low audio quality. There's all sorts of taps and knocks and little bumps and sounds because I only had her over on Sunday and then she was gone. And then when I started editing it, I noticed there were parts that were just like, oh, crap, the sound is awful. But she was gone. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? There was nothing I could do. Uh, I just had to use those takes. And a long time ago, somebody heard the low audio quality of my recordings and offered to buy me new microphones. And I was too proud <laughs> <laughs> to take them up on it. And so now I just shake my head in what was I thinking this. This episode would have been much clearer sounding, I think, or better sounding had uh, had I been more humble. Uh, but then the other thing is, and you know this better than anybody, I'm really loathe to share my work. Right. Uh, I hate I do to, know to put myself well. out there. And I, I was so afraid that I think our forum the people in our forums tend to be friendly and accessible and they take things with a grain of salt and they laugh for the most part at, at our jokes or, or our show you know they seem to be fans of the show uh -huh. um, but there have been criticisms there have been things that people didn't like in the past and True. i was just so afraid that that was going to happen i'm always afraid right um I, well, just today i got a rejection letter or i got a a response to a submission, and I was terrified to open the email. I was like, oh, shoot. I would rather just delete it and never know whether it was accepted or not <laughs> than get a, a, a rejection. And you feel quite the opposite, right? Wait, not, not the opposite, but you feel... I love to be rejected, dude. It's so awesome. Well, see, you're so used to women <laughs> giving themselves to you that rejection is a new thing. For you, it's it's like wow. Yeah, it's you know? a fun. It's a fun experience. I don't. It's like Superman feeling pain for the first time. It's like whoa, hit me again. Something special. It's exquisite. Warning: Today's episode contains the F word. Uh, no, you know I don't like to be rejected any more than anyone else, but I do understand that it's part of the process. You know, rejection is just something you have to deal with. Nobody's born walking erect. Did you really say that? They have to. They have to first lay on their back and roll around and then finally roll over and then learn to crawl and then pull themselves up and then start walking. You know, all that. Well, should, should I be taking notes on this? Yes. All that stuff. It's a big, long, involved process. And I think learning to write is the same thing. It's not something that you can just do. Just because you know how to spell doesn't mean you can write a good story. Everybody learns how to make a sentence and a paragraph when they're in school, but being a storyteller is a skill that you have to learn just like you have to learn to play a guitar or do the high jump or something like that. It's all skills that need to be learned. Rejection's kind of part of that. It's instruction. They'll tell you, you know, you, this isn't good enough yet. And sometimes they'll tell you why, which is helpful because then you can say, oh, well, this is kind of the same thing that the other person said. This, I guess, is something I should work on. And so you can focus your practice on that sort of thing. So I'm not too afraid of rejections. You know, I, I think I've mentioned it on the show before when I read about Tobias Bakel's, uh, you know, he shared his process of becoming, you know, going from being a man to novice, woman. <laughs> going Sorry. from being a novice to a professional. And part of that was, you know, he made the goal of getting a hundred rejections in a year, which basically it wasn't that he wanted to be rejected. It was just that that was a way to make himself send out at least a hundred submissions. So, you know, I thought maybe that would be a good goal for me. Of course, I didn't do that. But you do have a folder for rejection. That's true. Which has to be the first step or second step after writing something or third step after Again, crawling and learning to right, walk. Right, yeah. It's, it's something that I think is part of the process. And I've noticed way better than I have, you've been submitting your stuff all over the place. Yeah, and I don't know how that happened because you know me. I I'm do. the guy that really, really wants to go to the dance. But then when he gets there, hides in the corner and just wishes that he could dance with the girls. Oh, this was a good song. Oh, I like this song. Oh, man, that was I know that. Yeah, this would be a good good slow dance song. Yeah, okay. Uh, have you tried this punch? And then the, the, 
the night ends, and uh -huh. for fear of rejection, I didn't participate in the dance at all. Mm -hmm. And now I'm very sad. Okay, but so back to submitting stories. You've been submitting stories. This is asking women to dance here you're doing. And some of them have agreed to make out with you. Don't go there. Well, that's probably going a little far. Some of them have agreed to stand within arm's reach of you. <laughs> yeah, not the one today. I did actually open it yeah, right before I left because it? I thought at some point you'd say, oh, come on, why didn't you open it? At least we could know. And I did read it, and it was a very... Nicely worded, but politely worded. Carefully worded form letter. It is, but... I, mean, I thought it was interesting how, how perfectly she made it seem as though it was my story and my story alone that got this. Because I got the same rejection letter today because Rish actually bugged me until I submitted a story which I knew was crap. <laughs> And I knew the rejection letter was going to be coming on that one, so I wasn't surprised at all. But, you know, I did it all the See, same. That's the difference between you and me. I didn't know whether my story was crap or not. I thought, well, you know, I spent all this time working on it and it's, then spent three times that amount trying to get it down to the number of words that they allow. Uh, and then I yeah, sent I didn't it spend a lot of time on mine. I dashed it off and I knew it was crap when I started writing it before it even finished. Was that your October Scary Story? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it of, was. Like last, last year? year? yes. I have never even shared my October Scary Story of last year with anyone. Surprise. You it's share so many of your stories with so many people that I'm amazed to hear that. A great man once said, what if they tell me I'm no good? What if they say, get out of here, kid? You've got no future. I don't know if I could. It was a great man. You're right. I think in the end, he got over that. Did he get to nail Leah Thompson? I think he probably did. Wait, no, he didn't get to nail Leah Thompson. That was his mom. Oh! <laughs> but he did get a big truck. And that's almost as good, right? That's a whole letter away from where... Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We could do a whole episode about this, and maybe we are. Maybe that's what this is. This was really meant to just be a little bonus Halloween episode, but who cares? We've got the mics out. Why not yeah, continue talking? Yeah. It costs like we the same. Ever, have we ever done a little episode of any sort? I don't believe so. We owe it to Nigel to... Uh, there you go. ...give it our all. A-W-L. It's a tool. So anyways... <laughs> Tell me more about this. You, you've submitted stories to many places, and how has that no, no, experience changed you? Many is an exaggeration. Well, you've gone beyond five. That is out of control for you. That's true. Did, did anybody say yay to you rather than nay to you? They did. Uh, I sold a story to an, a British anthology. I sold a story to a fellow fiction podcast. Uh, Norm Sherman scooped up one of my drabbles. You can't see, but this guy's squirming. I don't. I like to talk <laughs> it's about. It's like the principal has got him in his office saying, Why, little Rishi, did you put that snake down Janine's pants? It was a metaphor. <laughs> I, I, I like making fun of myself. I don't like this actual introspection. <laughs> Well, that's pretty interesting. You know, that actually makes me feel like I need to get off the schneid. Whoa, what? what? And get with it and do some submitting of my own. Maybe writing. Hey, I what, ought to try that too. schneid? You never heard get off the schneid? Should I be bleeping it every time you say this word? You don't need to bleep it. It's one of them uh, Yiddish terms, I think. Just for fun. It's a perfectly meshug in the word. Yeah, it's a perfectly cromulent word. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't your best friend marry a woman called schneid? <laughs> According to Dixon Baseball Dictionary, the term schneids comes to baseball via Jim Rummy and in turn comes from German Yiddish schneider, one who cuts cloth, i.e., a tailor. I'm gonna schneiden. Schnell! Yeah, so, yeah, you know. Maybe I ought to, ought to do that. If you've gotten thirty percent acceptances, that's fairly good. I'm sure it's not typical. Well, and maybe I, maybe you're sending them to the easiest, most accepting places. I don't know, but but if there are easy accepting places, isn't that where we want to send our stuff all the time? Perhaps, but you know, it's worth actually doing it. You know, it's something that ought to be done. In the past, we had somewhat lofty goals. Uh, um, I had listened to a bunch of online friends podcasting their own novels uh-huh 
And I had a lengthy short story and I said, hey, we're going to do that as like an uh, adjunct to the Dune Steve, kind of like we do with our That Gets My Goat. And it's going to be a full cast adaptation of one of my larger stories. And oh, it's going to kick total butt. And then a certain episode hit. And I said, oh, no, I'm never, ever going to do that. (laughs) (laughs) Then you got back on the schneid. Okay. For our Gentile listeners, what does off the schneid mean again? It just basically means get it going on. So you do it, want to be off the schneid? Right. Being on, Basically, you can just replace the word schneid with butt. Or took to, us. Took us. Okay. So you need to get off the schneid. That means get up and get moving, more or less. I mean, it probably has a more precise definition somewhere in the urban slang dictionary dot com backslash dot org. Yeah. It's not an important thing that we need to spend time on the show discussing. Too late. Oh. I've deliberately wasted your time. Uh, what were we saying before you started in on this whole schneid sidetrack? No, well, the two points I wanted to make was, one, I'm really sorry about the crappy microphone, and two, I don't really like to share my stuff. That's, it. that's the only Oh, that's right. Point. I said you got back on the schneid after that episode. <laughs> so you had that story that you were going to share, and I even had it on our list yeah, we had it on the schedule. And I finally just deleted it off the list because I saw that... What seems can happen? Yeah. Someday I'm just going to record it without you and just put it on there without you even knowing that it's coming. Bam! There it'll be. My pride wouldn't allow you to record an episode without me. <laughs> okay, let's just talk for a couple more minutes of, and then we'll let people go. We haven't asked people for submissions in a long time. We haven't asked people for donations in a long time. Oh, shoot, I just spoiled it, what we're about to do. Uh, you and I had this conversation the other night. We got together and we talked until late. three yeah, in the morning, really four late. in the morning. Uh, right after watching a late night movie, then we sat outside in the parking lot and talked for hours till I was freezing. The weather is just starting to turn towards fall here. And so I was shuddering and shaking by the time I finally got in my car and had to turn on the heater. It was so beyond the normal time of day that a person should be out. In in your defense, you were wearing one of those mesh nylon sleeveless shirts. It was a one piece, actually. Ew. <laughs> and so, yes, the, the main thing we were talking about was the podcast. Uh-huh. Oh, how is the podcast going? Are we still going to end the podcast? Or are, are we pleased with it? How could we get more listeners? What sounds good for the future? What do we like about the past? What kind of jokes do we need to bring back? We haven't said hell no, Big Anklevich, in a long time. Hell of, no, Big Anklevich. These are all things that we talked about that night. So we sort of vowed that the next time we got together, we would record a tiny bit uh, for the next show just to fix what we thought was wrong with the show. Well, I don't know that you could say that there are things that are wrong with the show, but there are things that we'd like to perhaps improve. Asking for donations, that is one of those things. Asking for donations is like asking the girl at the dance. <laughs> like, hey, Righteous Brothers is playing. This song, you liked Ghost. Would you, would you, you, I know you don't know. No, I won't touch you there, please. Oh, there she goes. Sort of. The good thing about it is we're just recording ourselves saying it to nobody. So we don't have to feel rejected when nobody actually donates. But some people have donated. And that's good. That's the only reason we still exist. Yeah, that's why we're still around. To tell you the truth, it's the way it is. But uh, we were just thinking that right now we pay a pittance to each author that gives us a story. And while we think we get wonderful stories for that pittance, we'd like to be able to reimburse the authors for their actual work that they spent at the, uh, writing these stories. Because despite our argument that we had about you know whether writing is hard or not hard, it may not be physically hard labor, but it is hard work. It takes effort. It takes thought and it takes skill to be able to construct a good story. And it deserves more than what we give it. We'd like to be able to do that, and the only way that we can do that is if we get more donations. So if you if you like good fiction and you want it to continue, please donate to the show. There are several buttons on the website. You can just go to dunesteef.com, and right on the side there's ways that you can subscribe to donate once a month, which is a really wonderful thing because then we can plan on actually having that money every month. We can know that, yeah, we can accept a story and pay more for it because we know that the money will be coming in. If you don't feel comfortable doing that, there is, of course, still the uh, option of just donating a one-time donation. And we can put it into the bank and have it standing by to be able to pay the authors with that. 
because it costs a certain amount to run the show, to have the show work every month. You broke it down, and I was surprised because it costs something just to be doonsteve.com. Right. And it costs something to upload files every single month right. or week or they charge you once a month. They charge once a month, yeah. The breakdown, you know, it costs several hundred dollars a year just for it to continue as is. And, you know, we'd love to be able to entice folks like, you know, we, we, we've had Mike Resnick, we've had Cory Doctorow on the show and several other authors that are names that you've probably heard before. We'd like to be able to entice some more of those people over to do stories. But the only way we can do that is if we have donations so that we can actually wave the stack of bills in front of them. Because, you know, you can't do that without the stack of bills. No, and and that's a good point. Just today, you have no idea how many times, you have no idea how many times the microphones have crapped out as we've been talking and you're like, whoa, 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 do that, say that again. Talking about, we got to get new microphones. Obviously, I need new microphones. <laughs> I, I would be better off taking these home when you get new microphones and using these from now on. And there's a certain story uh, called Ass Hat Magic Spider that you wanted to buy forever. <laughs> uh, I would really like to have a story by the author of my Conf on the show Jeez. and <laughs> sorry come on and and these you are, sir are worse than hitler thank you and we're just not able to do it you know certain people are unwilling to give their stories away for practice right some free. of these people do it for a living and they make money off of uh, the stories that they write it's you know what they do and so they can't just give away their stories because then they won't be making money and you know everybody likes to eat I like to eat a lot, but that's a different topic because dieting is much kind of like, like nuclear a heart. nuclear holocaust. <laughs> but, uh, you, yeah. sir, are worse than Oh, Hitler. so we'd like to encourage everybody to donate. Okay, please donate. This is something we've never said on the show before, but anybody who donates, and you know how hard this is for me to say, but I'm going to say it. I've got a couple of stories that we've recorded and set aside to reward people who donate. That's right. If and, you and donate, you will be sent an email with a link in it to an MP3 of a story by Rish Outfield. Just as crappy as the one you just heard. <laughs> and if you donate a second time, uh, then you will get sent another link with a story written by Big Anklevich. That's kind of cool or kind of self-indulgent. or <laughs> I, I'm not sure what that is. It's kind of something. And that's what is important. Kind. It, it's kind. good it's to be kind. important, but it's more important to be good. No. What am I saying? I have no idea. Let's move on. Right. Okay. Please donate. We will try and reward you. We, we will continue doing the show. Uh, I'll give you a little hint. Uh, one of the guys that B Big just mentioned as an example, uh, we've got another story by him coming up. Yeah. And, and these things continue if you will help us continue. And, and look, if you can't donate, then fuck no, I'm not going to say that. Then please go on to iTunes and write us a nice review or comment. And, or I'm mention sorry, us no. to a friend. Say, hey, this podcast is cool. You should listen to it. Because if you can't donate, maybe you can entice somebody else that maybe can. Right. Long live the Dune Steve on a restroom wall. There you go. Or there are these other podcast uh, server type things like Podcast Pickle and that. You could go on there and review us or give us a good score. You could blog about us. Yeah. Here's something. Facebook. You could go onto Facebook and hit like us, add us as your friends. What's, uh, what's that thing that I hate? Twitter. Twitter. You we are on Twitter. Twitter. You can follow us on Twitter. You can retweet when we have an episode that hits. Yeah, all that kind of stuff can help the show grow. So if you're a fan or if you even sort of like us or if you just want to bother some people, that you don't, all those Facebook friends that you only accepted them because you felt bad ignoring them. And so, you know, you could send it on to them if you can't stand us and therefore want to inflict us upon them. You know, whatever. No news is good news. Wait. Ew. No, no puns allowed on the show new rule optimus <laughs> he's not here so there's a number of ways you can help us you can volunteer to read slash stories that come in the submissions you could send in submissions yeah you could volunteer to do artwork 
for the episodes. I mean, that would be cool. I, sometimes that happens. Uh -huh. You could uh, volunteer to edit a whole episode for us. And yeah. contribute voices. Although, uh, you know, we're doing pretty good with the voices. I'm impressed with uh, everybody we had to. Oh, yeah. Wait, that was me. <laughs> yeah. You know, we welcome anything that you would like to do to contribute. Way back in episode zero, I think, was when we gave our first state of the podcast. We kind of laid out our goals of what we wanted. And we wanted this show to grow, become something important. Uh, what I've always wanted to be, is to be able to pay people professional rates for the stories that they write. And I don't know if that's ever possible or how far in the future that will be. Uh, but, you know, to be able to pay somebody six cents a word. Instead of two quarters of a cent for three words. Right. You know, and, and two quarters. <laughs> and again, that's only going to happen by getting the donations. You can think of your donation. I think I've made this analogy before. Um, I mean, we're, our show is free, but you could think of your donation as though it was like you're subscribed to a magazine. Because we once had volume numbers and page numbers and all that stuff to evoke a magazine before Optimus Prime stomped all over my heart. He died for your sins. We have to do as he said. <laughs> Oh, What's black? Holds a microphone and will never know the loving touch of a woman. Rish outfield soul. So anyways, you, know, you could think of it that way if you need some sort of encouragement or something like that. Anyways, what would you say the state of the podcast is, Rish? Where are we going in the future? What do we have planned? A lot of repeat authors, you know, like we had Michael Stone last week. And uh, obviously, we've got the broken mirror stories, which That's we should right. have done ages ago. But summer happened. Those are coming soon. And, and, and yeah. uh, we're excited about those. Those will take a little more effort due to the subject matter and the children involved in the subject matter. It's a challenge and a fun one at that. What, you don't believe me? Look at me funny. No, so it's, it's just hard the voice work. that you did. It's, I, I don't know what the future holds. We've accepted enough stories to get us through the, for the rest of the year. Uh -huh. Who knows what's going to happen in 2011? But, but 2012 is when the world ends. So Yeah, I we, think we got some time before. We then. may make it till then. Uh, I would like to be able to buy uh, a replacement for the Android. I would like to be <laughs> able to get an announcer man who doesn't go out for smoke breaks all the time. See you later, everybody. I'm going for a smoke break. No, no, no. That wasn't a cue. I was just, I was complaining. Of, wow. I don't know. More good stuff. Oh, okay. Here, here's something I've told no one. We've got another Popoka story coming up. Oh. Yeah. You and I listen to a lot of audiobooks. You have a, a monster commute and I have a, a gremlin commute. Like some, some small oh. fantasy creature that's okay. not, it's not quite a monster. Uh, an imp commute and uh, a brownie uh, there there you go a pixie <laughs> if you if you will <laughs> oh jeez sorry we lost another listener I, I you know i'll listen to the way that they do their audiobooks or the way that they deliver their lines or the way that they you know just handle certain performances and stuff and certain people have different styles and sometimes i think we do just as good a job as as this guy does Okay. Um, or I'll be like, wow, that, that guy is professional as, as... All get out. Right. And I'll think, I, I wish we could be that professional. But the truth is, we're doing this in our free time. There's right. a, the, the, the word professional means that's what you do for a living. And certainly our banter is not professional. It's not <laughs> intended to be. It's just two guys joking around. But the actual acting, the actual editing, music, Brilliant. Sound, sound effects, thank you, is as close as we can get. You know me, I, I'd much rather make fun of myself than pat myself on the back. Be besides, I'm also very limp-wristed and you just watch me do it. It's just like, ooh, it's, it's an ugly sight. Yeah. But, you know, we, we do the best we can. And if this were a professional thing, I guess I could go back or, or, or call my niece in and say, drive up another 45 miles and we'll record <laughs> it again on Big's microphone and, and get it to go through better. Right. And so these are goals in the back of my mind. I, I wish it, it sounded cleaner. I wish 
that we had some way if there's a stumble or you and I talk over each other all the time. And we yeah. always thought if we were recording on two different tracks, then you could lower one track or you could skip one track a little ahead. Rem- so we didn't yeah, talk right over the each other. stuff that is unimportant. That would be cool. Maybe that's one of those things along with getting microphones that don't suck. We could also get a stereo mixer. mixer. And yeah, I don't know. We're continuing the show. We're doing the best we can. I think that a lot of these shows are darn good. And if you think so, too, uh, let us know. If you don't think so, don't just, just be nice about it. Think, think. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like to be rejected, remember? I don't. It's, it's rough. And I, certainly my life is insular and pretty pathetic because of that fear of rejection, because of the shell of self-preservation that I, I built around myself, but you know, to hear that, hey, you're good at that. Yes, I will dance with you. That is encouragement. That makes it a little bit easier the next time. Like you said with the submissions, right. having some guy says, I like your story, I'll take your story, makes me think, wow, okay, then next time, maybe I'll do that again. Uh. Exactly. I, you know, that's that's exactly the point I wanted to... to that That's the fine that point. That sums it up perfectly. Su- yes, you crystallized my thoughts eloquently. Thank you. I aim to please. You aim to please. So, folks, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Oh. Thank you for listening all the way through. Thank you for being friends of the show. And have a great post-Halloween bacchanal. All Saints Day. Right. Day of the Dead. and uh, Dia de los Muertos. Well, not bad pronunciation there, White Bread. Chalupa for you, Rish. We're gonna, going to leave you today with uh, a trick. Because Big said this was a treat rather than a trick, and, and I'm going to make a liar of him. We tried doing this last year, <laughs> and it was just so hard. <laughs> We didn't even use it as an outtake. You know, it was going to be like Big and Rish's Halloween greetings, and it was going to be a little MP3 on there. And then we listened to it. And we're like, wow, this is awful. And <laughs> it's like I was saying about professionalism, we weren't willing to go back and practice it and do it six more times until we got it right. But we did try it again here in 2010. And uh, that's, that's it. Take us out, announcer man and uh, Mr. Elfman. The Doonstief is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Boys and girls of every age, would you like to see something strange? Come with us and you will see, this our town of Halloween. This is Halloween, this is Halloween, pumpkins scream in the dead of night. This is Halloween, everybody make a scene, trick or treat till the neighbor's gonna die of fright. It's our town, everybody scream! In this town of Halloween. I am the one hiding under your bed, teeth grown sharp and eyes growing red. I am the one hiding under your stairs, fingers like snakes and spiders in my hair. This is Halloween, this is Halloween. Halloween, 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 Halloween. In this town, we call home, everyone hail to the pumpkin song. In this town, don't we love it now, everybody's waiting for the next surprise. Round that corner man hiding in a trash can. Something's waiting now to pounce and how you'll scream. This is Halloween. Red and black and slimy green. Aren't you scared? Well, that's just fine. Say it once, say it twice. Take a chance and roll the dice. Ride with the moon in the dead of the night. Everybody scream! Everybody scream! In our town of Halloween! I am the clown with the tearaway face! Here in a flash and gone without a trace! I am the who when you call who's there! I am the wind blowing through your hair! I am the shadow on the moon at night, filling your dreams to the brim with fright! This is Halloween! This is Halloween! 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 Lovelies everywhere Life's no fun without a 
a good scare. That's our job, but we're not mean. In the town of Halloween. In this town? Don't we love it now? Everyone's waiting for the next surprise. Skeleton Jack might catch you in the back and scream like a banshee. You jump out of your skin. This is Halloween. Everyone scream. Won't you please make way for a very special guy? Our man Jack is king of the pumpkin patch. Everyone hail to the pumpkin king now. This is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 In this town we call home. Everyone hail to the pumpkin song. La 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 la. Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> we may have ruined that song for generations to come. <laughs> if a generation listened to the show, that would really mean something. Do we want to say good night, or is that good enough? Take two. Episode 87. Mm. Episode 88. Mm. Episode 89. Mm. Episode 90. Mm. Episode 102. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to keep hearing you make that noise over and over again for fun. If you're a longtime listener, uh, thank you. <laughs> <sighs> yes, I believe it is called... Crap, I wrote it and I don't know what it's called. The story is called Sleepless Afternoon by Rish Outfield. Rish Outfield is a pedophile that has been in prison for the last 20 years. He was just released yesterday and is now back in the clink. I couldn't stay away. I wish I could quit you. <laughs> Wait, is that, I wish I, I knew how to quit you? I don't know. Yeah, maybe I should think of something more clever and less offensive. But wait, you're just talking about me. How would that possibly... Oh, never mind. Testing, testing. I wonder if I should have an accent or if I should just do it as me. Really? Let's hear you say Daddy Help. Daddy Help! That's good, but it's going to be too hard to do a performance. Now, I'm just going to do my regular voice because it'll be easier. There's an old English professor in my closet, Daddy. Okay, do it again. There's an old English, English professor... <laughs> There's an old English pro English professor in my closet, Daddy. You're struggling on English. Why? I don't know. Come on, there's an old there's, e there's an old English in there's an old English professor. There's an old English professor in my closet, Daddy. Okay, say it again. English. What is that hard for you to say? There's an old English professor. I well, I my teeth are falling out too. It's hard. It's fine. There's an old English professor in my closet, Daddy. All right. Hey, this is hard to do this. And it's best I told you than you hear about it in the graveyard. And certainly not from little antichrists like Timothy. Oh, I couldn't do it. And certainly not from little antichrists. And certainly not. And certainly not from little antichrists like Timothy Hellspawn. Oh, it's hard to say. Scary drone. Scary, God bless the scare, or <laughs> Lucifer bless the scary drone. And uh, we've got... Um, Doesn't that mean popcorn? No? Pochoclo. Uh, um, Pachuca. <laughs> Pachuca to you, man. <laughs> Chalupa for you, Rish. <laughs> Chalupa for you, fish. 